Good morning. I just wanted to come on here really quick for a few messages. And I'm going to do two separate videos for those messages. But the first message for my galactic chicks out there, good morning. I'm the First Lady Erica. And I just wanted to share some thoughts with you about your time and how valuable it is. And I did write in the group today to let you know a certain thing that happened and how I stood, uh, stood up for myself and um, laid out some boundaries. It's something that I'm doing more, that we're each doing more and more. But I also wanted to give you some reasoning too behind it to help you for yourself that you could just not only look at it as a self-care type issue, but also something, a tool to make you actually more powerful because as you begin to take on more projects, this is something that you need to implement because your time is very important. So I have a book called Vision Boards, you know, with passion and purpose. And uh, one of the lessons in there I took from Steve Covey I love his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And so as I, as I began to change years and years ago and start to understand like, why does it feel like I'm just wandering aimlessly? And why does it feel like I'm just kind of floating but not really going anywhere? And this was something that really, really helped me learning about time management, and just how much people can waste your time. And they, you know, is it something they do on purpose? No, they don't know, you don't know. We just kind of float around, bumping around. But I'll start with this and showing you Steve Covey's seven habits. So I'm gonna go ahead and share screen. Kind of forgot to do that part, right? Share screen. All right. So Steve Covey has seven habits for highly effective people. And the first one is to be proactive. And it's interesting too, because I was talking to a young lady the other day and she, she was about to have a conversation. And I think I talked to everyone about how people can throw you off your game because they have what they want to say planned out. And then they approach you and they want you to react and respond. And so you'll be reactive. So uh, we both discussed how to be proactive, but with your day, it's good to be proactive. And um, sometimes you can write lists at night before you go to bed. Like, this is what I want to get done tomorrow or you write it out for the week, what you wanna get done for the week and maybe break it down into days. And then at night before you um, go to bed, you, you have that planned out. I'm, I'm great at writing lists, but sometimes maybe not like the night before type list. I like to text myself though too. I text myself maybe before I go to bed, I'm thinking about the things I wanna do and I send myself a text message, but I wanna keep going. And so in the morning, you can begin with the end in mind. So when you're, or even just with a task, before you start the task, what are you trying to accomplish? Because a lot of times you can do a lot of running around and get a lot of things done, but were those things necessary for the task? Some people explain it like this, like if you climb the ladder, because you did all these work, you did all these steps, but the ladder was up against the wrong wall. So I got all this done, but it didn't really pertain to that particular task. So begin with the end in mind, breaking the things down, like this, this thing that I'm trying to achieve with steps that specifically apply to this. And therefore staying on track. I think an issue with that, that kind of blocks you in that area sometimes too, 
sometimes maybe we don't do enough research for that particular thing that we're trying to achieve. So you research it like, okay, I was going to the DMV and I know that I need to take my documents with me, but I didn't go on the website to look to see which documents I need, but I have all the documents except the ones that I need. So here I gathered documents, got dressed, did my hair, made sure I could take the picture. I got my money together, went all the way down to the DMV, drove, got there. Now I took all these steps, but now I don't have the correct documents. So the latter was literally leaning on the wrong wall. The steps that I took weren't the ones that really necessarily applied to getting this done. So that's a very small example of that. Then there's put first things first. Sometimes I find myself doing things that are like, you, 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 you're putting these things out there and you're like, oh, first I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do that. But it's still those things don't really apply. Right? Because we get to be busy. And here we go. This is this is where what happened to me this morning kicks in. And someone came to me and asked me to do something. Number one, it's something that I have a good skill in doing. There's people that do it better than me, but I'm pretty good at it. And if I want that kind of task done, I know that I can do it. I don't have to pay anybody to do it. When they, but it's also something that it takes time and coordination, has to go back and forth, get approvals to create this item. And I honestly don't really like, I like doing it for myself because I know what I want. But I don't like doing it for other people because they they like omit things and it's like, oh, can you add this? Can you change that? Oh, don't spell it this way. Can you change the color? Can you add this picture? Oh, I don't like that picture. And I'm like, so where something was really small and simple, I could just be like doing this. It becomes a lot of communication and a lot of time. And I don't like that part. That's why I don't I don't even um, do it for a living. It's something I could probably charge to do, but I don't even do that because I really don't enjoy that back and forth. There's some people that really are good at that back and forth and change this and fix that. And they're good at that. And me, I'm like, Ugh, I, don't, I don't enjoy this task. So let's just say that. But it's something I've done in the past. I've done it for that person in the past. But this time I was like standing firm on my ground. I'm not going to do this. Right. So it was like, kudos, we set a boundary, but beyond a boundary, there's something more important to it. I'm going to make sure that you can see this. Aha. Uh -huh. So I didn't need to change screens. Now, Jeepers. This is a page in my book and I'm taking Steve Covey's quadrants and I'm putting it to use in my book, but I'll, I'll go to, maybe I'll go back to him, Steve Covey and I'll go change pages because you need to see his chart. Okay, so we're on the right track. You need to see his chart. So first, the first quadrant is things that are important. So look over here, it says things that are important and they're urgent. So that sounds like you should be doing that all the time, right? So then there's things that are not urgent, but they're important. I don't know, just looking at that, which one do you think you should be doing most of the time? Things that are urgent and important or things that are not urgent, but important. I'm going to leave that and I'll answer that in a moment. Now, then there's things that are not important, but they're urgent. Yikes. They're not important, but they're urgent. Then there's things that are not urgent and not important. So you can see this. The person who is a procrastinator, they're going to stay in the urgent 
an important category. For me, I call those people 911 people. And I don't wanna be a 911 person. I don't wanna be running around all the time like everything is an emergency. But I noticed that 911 people tend to call reliable people and, and ask them for things to do all the time. Like, oh my God, my light bill is due and I don't have enough money. You know, and I always wonder about this sometimes with people like say if something happens and you have to spend extra money on, you know, around the first of the month. When it comes to that, you know that you've already spent some extra. Instead, maybe try to earn something extra to make up for that expense instead of waiting until the end of the month until it's exactly due date and then calling around being like, oh my God, or, you know, any, anything where you would procrastinate and now at the last minute. So, but they also include things like, oh, you got your test tomorrow, so you didn't study, your friend gets hurt, late for class, essays due, things like that. Eh. But then there's not urgent, but important. And that's the project you wanna stay in because that means you, you're doing things that are important for the future. So you're getting things done ahead of time so they're not urgent, but they're important. But I like the fact that they said, you know, your relationships, relaxation, working out, planning for goals, doing things ahead of time. I really enjoy the fact that they put relationships and relaxation on there because you do need to prioritize those. You do need to set time for that because it is important, even though it's not urgent. And if you spend all your time running around in quadrant one, maybe you you can't have a good time, relax, and, and you can't really have good relationships because you're always running around. Now, the third one is a yes man. It's funny because this is number one and number three is right underneath it. So it's either you can find yourself being in this procrastinator category where you're the 911 person, or you could end up being the yes man who the 911 people always come to. So people, you end up having phone calls where people say, hey, can you do me a favor? Hey, can I get some help? And you're the yes man. So you're, you could either be number one or number three, doing things that aren't important. See how it's urgent, but it's not important to you. Answering fielding questions, saving other people from emergencies, basically, you're the guy um, answering for other people's problems and you succumb to peer pressure because what? You're, you're always doing what someone else needs, but that's because, well, there's an explanation for it. There's an explanation for it and uh, I'll get to that. Now, number four is the slacker. So that's the person who does things not urgent and not important. So that could be just playing games. And I don't know, sometimes I would put texting endlessly into that category. Nonstop Xbox, mall marathons. So basically shopping for things you don't need, mindless gossip and time wasters. So I think that is very much self-explanatory. Now I wanna go to my list. Now, the, the, I, I don't like 911 people. I'm just gonna tell you, I can't stand it when people call you and it's the last minute and it's always a fire. And you, if you just take a moment and take a step back, right? I bet you can think of people that are in your life that are always, 911 calling you, everything's always an emergency, everything's always going wrong, everything, you know, because what? They don't plan for their own problems and it creates perpetual drama because everything's a freaking emergency. Now then, what you're trying to do is to not be, you're not, you're trying to not be the 911 person, but you're also trying not to be a gopher. You, if you don't have a plan for yourself, someone will have a plan for you. 
So if you didn't write down the things that you needed to do the next day or that week, and you don't have a prior, have your things prioritized, what it is that you want to get done for your day, the moment someone calls you with their 911, now you're turning into this gopher. And you're helping other people all the time and you're being bombarded and you become known for being that person. That's why they're calling you. Now, that's a big thing. You, When you're always fixing and putting out other people's fires, you get known as that person. So you're going to get more and more calls for borrowing money and catching a ride and, you know, fixing things and even listening to people talk about something because you'll get to the point where here people are, they're talking about the same problem over and over again. They really don't have any re anything, any plans on fixing it, but they have fun talking about it. It's just a thing to do is to talk about your problems. And that's something I was talking with Danny with last night that when you become Mr. or Mrs. Problem Solver, that, that's your reputation now or the person that's always listening and fielding all those questions. If you get used to being that shoulder all the time, then that's all people do is they just become, you know, used to dumping those things on you. Now, if you are the person in the focus group and you're a step ahead and you're thinking things out and planning things out, when you get the 911 call, You can help if you want, if you feel you have time. There's a habit that Steve Covey puts out there and it's an exchange. So you call me because you don't, um, you got a job interview and you don't have someone to watch your kids and it's the last minute. But maybe I, I'm doing something today because I had plans I was gonna drive across town or I was gonna do X, Y, Z. Now we are in the point of exchange. You can call me and maybe I can do it, but now I have to give you something of mine. Or I could just let you know, like, you know, today I had some really big plans. I had to do a video uh, conference and um, I had to deliver this package across town. I have to get some stuff done. Now I can do this for you if you don't mind doing this for me, then we can both get our stuff done. Or I have to make 10 phone calls today and maybe I can deliver your package if you don't mind maybe doing these phone calls for me or maybe um, helping me wash my car or whatever it is. But if it's like, hey, if you, if you can take something off my plate, then I can take something off your plate. So you get people used to respecting your time and giving you an equal exchange instead of just taking from you, they're also giving from you. Now, even though I think it's very important for you to, to really evaluate though, when you're around people, are they always with the 911 or do they have legitimate concerns? And just to really stop trying to fix and solve people's problems. So this is the part that me and Danny were talking about last night or Danny and I were talking about last night, which was why do some people thrust themselves in to be Mr. and Mrs. Fix It and solve other people's problems. And we came up with several ideas on why is that? Why is it that people are doing that in the first place? And one of the big things is, it's some people's own ego. This year, I decided to refer people back to themselves. When people come to me and say, what do you think I should do? I'm going to, I'm telling people, I don't know. What do you think you should do? You know, if you should buy the blue car or the green car, I don't know because I can't be responsible for your disappointment. So I can't take on a lot of the things that people are trying to give to me because I, I can't be responsible for it and I don't have the energy for it. And I have energy to get things done for myself. 
without interference. But my ego is not so big too that I think I have the solutions to everyone's problems because I think we're starting to understand though in this age that people need to go inside themselves and figure out what's best for them. They have to find that out. You have your own guides and your own, you know, you have your own spirit team working with you. And I think we've become so dependent on what other people think and how other people feel, we've lost ourselves in the process and we have to allow ourselves and others to get back to the point where they are solving their own problems. So one, it is some people's ego that they want to feel like they've saved someone and they get to tell everyone like, I did this for you and I did that for you. And then for some people, it might be guilt and the need, the desire to feel needed. And I know I've come to the point where I don't want people to need me. I want people to just want to be around me, but not to need me. You know, that, that's a whole different feeling. That's a, a real friendship because, and then consider this, what if you have to tell someone no and they have a negative response because you said no, then you, you can really see something because no, I can't babysit for you today, girl. I got, you know, I have to go across town or I'm going out of town or I'm doing X, Y, Z. How do they respond? Do they lash out at me? Am I afraid to say no because I'm afraid the person will lash out at me? Or they won't be my friend? Or, uh, you know, am I doing all these things for other people because that's the only way that I think I can have a friend? And is that really friendship if, if I have to constantly solve your problems or be some type of servant for you to be your friend? Now, service to others and service to self is one thing, but is there fear and guilt involved? Is it, am I doing something because I get to do it or because it's some type of obligation that's making me feel a way? Try not to forget so. And those are some, some important thoughts. Do I get to do it or do I feel some sense of obligation? Am I, am I also missing out on things that I'm supposed to be doing for myself? Try not to rush, but I want to remember something. And um, meanwhile, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pull this chart back up. You definitely want to stay in the focus group. You want to plan. Of course, you can't plan for everything. But you definitely don't want to go around trying to solve everybody else's problems and be known as a gopher or that person that's always bailing people out. You want to be able to have that exchange. And you want to feel good about your relationships. You don't want people always coming to you to solve their problems. And you don't want to be that person that's going around draining people by putting all your problems on them. So I'm going to stop to share. I think, I think we got it all. But definitely that situation this morning, I stood in my power because I really get to that point where when people call me, I really just feel obligated to do things. And I'm just, I'm so to the point where I'm actually needing help, but I'm actually willing to pay for my help, but I'm, <laughs> I'm needing help with some of the tasks that I have on my plate because I have a lot that I want to get done. So the next thing I'm going to do is another video. It's about encouragement.
And then I'm going to get me some sleep. Chat with you later.